Hello, friends. My name is Eric Clowart, and welcome to the Stoic Coffee Break. The Stoic Coffee Break is a weekly podcast where I take an aspect of Stoicism and do my best to break it down to its most important points. I share my experiences, both my successes and my failures, and hope that you can learn something from them, all within the space of a coffee break. This week's episode is the first time I've ever done a live interview. I interviewed Mark Tauteret. He is an Olympic gold medalist speed skater. He lives here in the Netherlands. And it was really a lot of fun to sit down at his home and chat with him about Stoicism and his upcoming book, The Stoic Mindset. And I really hope that you enjoy this interview. I'm going to be working on getting more videos out and adding to my YouTube channel. And like I said, I really hope you enjoy this interview with Mark and that you can learn something from it. And make sure that you be on the lookout for his book. In the show notes to the show, there will be some information about how you can get in touch with Mark and find out more about Mark and his book that's coming out in April. All right, we'll talk to you later. So hello, everybody. Today is uh, my first live interview for the Stoke Coffee Break podcast. Um, I'm here with Mark Tutere. So uh, we're actually here in the Netherlands. Um, I just happened to be here when uh, we got contacted by him. And it, so this worked out. So this is my first time actually doing a live interview and filming it. So hopefully this will go well. No, we so. actually have a coffee break. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> or tea. Mm-hmm. So for me, this is rather exciting because, like I said, this is, uh, this is all new. And... Uh, I guess let's just jump right into it. Sure. Um, first off, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to my audience? My name is Mark Tuitert. Uh I was an Olympic speed skater, uh, and speed skating here in Holland is a pretty big sport. So I was a professional athlete between my 18th and, well, 34, 34 years old. And uh, after that, I have now my own company. I'm a motivational speaker. I write books, uh, mainly uh, also about stoicism. Uh, I'm a big and avid fan of the Stoics. Uh, so yeah, for me, I'm a father of two. I love music. I love sports. I love life. Um, but I've had some challenging situations as an athlete, as an Olympic athlete. Um, and I still work for television sometimes. Uh, okay. I go to the Olympics and do commentary. Oh, nice. Very nice. Um, so your, your agent sent me over a copy of your latest book. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, the Stoic mindset. Yes. Um, I always uh, used a lot of uh, wisdom uh, from philosophy during my sports career. So within my career, I had to deal with a lot of pressure being an Olympic athlete. Um, I missed out on two Olympics actually in 2002 and th- 2006 by various reasons. We can dive into that later probably. Uh, And that were really challenging times for me. So I had to deal with overtraining, with my parents in a divorce situation, with pressure of sports, with pressure of, well, the public. Here in Holland, speed skating is a big sport, so you have a lot of pressure. And you can earn money with it, of course. But Mm -hmm. on the other side, missing two Olympic Games was for me a tough situation because I've been training for four years for the one Olympics in 2002 in Salt Lake City, training for four years for the Olympics in 2006 in Turin, and I missed out on those. So for me, I had one chance to train for Vancouver another four years. Um, and during that time, uh, I read a lot um, and I really was intrigued by the meditations of Marcus Aurelius, by the sayings of Seneca, of Epictetus. Now, you really, during my career, as I got older and a little bit wiser, I used mm-hmm. these texts and philosophy, I, philosoph- philosophical ideas to um, yeah, not only yeah, be, a, be, a, be a better person or make wiser choices. Uh, and that helped me a lot uh, leading up to the Olympics in 2010. For me, that was the pinnacle of my career, pro- probably the last chance mm-hmm. I, uh, I could start on an Olympic Games. And two or three weeks right before these games, I did everything I could within my control to be the best athlete I can be. Um, And I had to dive deep for that in my whole life. Uh, And yeah, for me, that was uh, uh, life changing. So what what my mindset was right before these Olympic Games, I think was really stoic. So I don't judge my parents for what they do. I don't. 
look at competitors, what they do. I don't worry about the journalist, what, what they write about me. I only focus on my internal state of mind, my mindset. That's what I call the stoic mindset mm -hmm. in my book. Um, and so I, I, I concentrate on my, yeah, my inner voice being stable, being, um, yeah, being a voice of courage. So not dealing, not pushing away the fear because you feel fear right before an Olympic Games, but Absolutely. working with it. So not pushing it away. Um, what stoic, yeah, could be in our English or Dutch language, mm -hmm. pushing feelings away, not like that at all, but just embracing the fear, embracing the challenge and just look at yourself. No, I give everything I have. I can look in the mirror. I know I did everything I could to get here. I'm 29 years old. I was in Vancouver. Um, probably this is going to be the last chance you get on an Olympic Games. Yeah, um, and that's you're nearing your retirement age as an athlete. Yeah. So these things for me were, yeah, these thoughts that they were thoughts that kept me grounded. And it's not that I didn't aspire to a big goal. I aspired to win Olympic gold, to be the yeah. best speed skater I can be. So that's what I wrote a book about. So how can you give everything you have, dream big, reaching your goals, but still detach from the negative emotions resulting uh, yeah, with that road leading up to that mm -hmm. big goal. And for me, that helped a lot. And after two, three years ago, uh, we had difficult times with my company, First Energy Gum. COVID was happening production wise, things were going the wrong way. Um, so I was really challenged again by the situations. And I thought, hey, I learned how to deal with this. Yeah. And I see a lot of people struggling with this. So why don't I write it down in a book uh, so people actually can, yeah, maybe learn something from it. And it's not like I want to point the finger, but I want to tell my story so people can relate to that. And they don't relate probably to winning an Olympic gold medal, but relate to the journey, relate to the setbacks, dealing with pressure, dealing with things that are not in your control, dealing with chaos. And that's why, where I find the beauty in stoicism. It's like, for me, how can you keep standing upright in the storm of life? Mm -hmm. Like Marcus Aurelius did, like Seneca Absolutely. did, like Absolutely. all these great thinkers and people did who adopted this philosophy. So what was it that first drew you to it? Or what, do you remember how you found Stoicism? Because Yeah, well, I was always intrigued by history in, in, in school. Mm -hmm. I loved history. And the first time I was really challenged by a situation was when I was 19, 20 years old. I was the hotshot talent in speed skating. I signed mm -hmm. a big contract. Um, I... I well, I, I, yeah, I, I was on pr under the pressure of the Olympics of 2002 coming up. I did a lot of interviews. Uh, my sponsor paid me a fair amount of money. Uh, so there was a lot of pressure on me, but I still was living at home with my parents who were going through a divorce. So mm -hmm. me being the oldest son, I tried to intervene between the pe two people I love and that didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Actually, it yeah, for me, what happened was I... Uh, yeah, I, I, what a sort was sort of a flight into the one thing I thought I could control. I was training harder. So for me, I trained harder and harder and harder. I trained seven days a week, two, three, three times a day. So Ooh. rest days, or <laughs> I don't do uh, rest days, you know. Yeah. I just grind, wake up early, go to bed late, and grind it through. But that's not how you become fit mentally and physically and emotionally. I was wrecked. Yeah. Uh, winter of 2002, I missed out on these Olympic Games. I was overtrained, lying on my bed. I was sick. So I couldn't train that winter. I missed the Olympic Games. And that was, for me, that was like a sort of an epiphany. Like, how can we fool ourselves like this? How can we think we know how it works, life works? You no, know? uh, if I put the hours in, and of course you have to work hard and put hours in to get somewhere, but Absolutely. we can get blindsided. We can have blinders on. And I had that. So I was, I was really fascinated how that worked. Like, how can I fool myself? I have to reflect on myself so that this doesn't happen again. I have to learn from this. So I read a lot about overtraining, about how psychology works. Uh, but I also read by then when I was 20 years old, beautiful text of Marcus Aurelius. So I, I read parts of the meditations already. 
Um, and a beautiful quote of, of Marcus is uh, the impediment to action advances action what stands in the way becomes the way. And mm-hmm. for me, yeah, that, that's, that's, that were the first lights of stoicism that I thought, hey, that's, that's a really, really beautiful way of thinking through setbacks, not as the end of the road, but it's an obstacle on your path and it's up to you to find a new direction in life. So that's actually my first chapter in my book. Uh, that you can use obstacles or setbacks as a signpost. So Mm -hmm. what does this teach me? How do I deal with this? Uh, And from that point on, uh, I found a new journey with a new coach uh, and it went really well. Within two years, I was a European champion and everything happened in the right way, but I still was not there. It's not really, really what stoicism clicked for me was in the years leading up to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. But I learned through the years it yeah it sort of evolved okay yeah no i i think that uh i think that overtraining is probably very common in a lot of sports yeah so i know that um so i used to cycle quite not competitively or anything like that but i used to cycle a lot and there'd be times when i'd just be riding you know you know two three hundred miles in a week and while for Tour de france athletes that's easy but i had a full-time job and kids and all that kind of stuff and it was you know, I basically wore myself out. And you, you reach a point where your body just says, hey, that's fine that you want to do that, but you can't. Oh. And learning to step back and go, okay. And so I think over the years, I've worked hard to try and develop that that attitude of working hard enough and resting enough. Yeah. And that has really made a big difference on that. And finding that, that the Stoic teaches, finding that temperance, that moderation. Yeah. And it's that balance of those two that's really going to get us there. Yeah, exactly. It's the self-discipline, the moderation you, you have to find. And, and of course, uh, if, especially when you're young, you, you can grind. You have to grind. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> there's, something, there's beauty in there, too, to yeah. have a big dream and give it all you have. But it's a really thin line in blinding yourself. So that's what I found is beautiful in stoicism it's the, pract- the practical philosophy side of it yeah yeah we don't philosophize about concepts and abstract things you can really philosophize and how how is this helping me to lead a good life and what does it mean to lead a good life what absolutely. is that absolutely is that winning an olympic gold medal a lot of people a lot of athletes i know uh, are under the misconception that if you win the medal like entrepreneurs if they sell the company if you do this then it's all been worthwhile. So yeah. you look back from that gold medal to your career and then you can say it's worth it. But that's, that's the other way. You, that's the wrong way of thinking about Absolutely. it. It's, it's a guaranteed failure for yourself if you look at it like that. If you think of happiness like that. If you think of success like that. So you can still chase that gold medal. But I think you really have to reflect on what it means to be successful. What does it really entail? Yeah, and very true. I think that uh, one of the things that, for me, I actually broached this topic on my podcast last week. It was like, how do you stay content yep. while you're striving for your ambitions? Yeah. And it's I, people think of them as you do one or the other. Like, yep. if I'm content with my life, I'm not going to be ambitious. And it's not that. It's that you find contentment on the path. You don't find contentment. At, it's not an end point. It's yep. not a static state of being. It's while you're journeying along, you find contentment there while you're heading towards your ambitions. And if you can do that, you enjoy the whole thing all along the way. And you're exactly. having a great time the whole along the way. Yeah. And, and you can have hard times and you yeah. can have challenging times. And sometimes you feel sad or you feel lost. And that can all be a part of that journey. But that's what life is, right? I th- find that beautiful in, a, in Epictetus or in the Stoics accept the reality of life. You know, it's not uh, a dream or uh, something far away. It's what life entails. So it's to accept that and not run away from it. But yeah, don't shy away from that. Yeah, absolutely. So I wanted to ask you, uh, Mm -hmm. what are your daily practices in Stoicism? What are the things that help you each and every day? Because in Stoicism, we talk a lot about having practices, about having kind of rituals that we follow to help remind us to live these things and yeah. to get us there. What are your practices? Well, I'm not like the dead ritual guy that has an agenda and says, I'm doing, I'm doing this at six o'clock and that at eight o'clock, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What I really do is before, uh, when I wake up and when I go to bed, I take a couple of minutes to reflect 
that's it actually. I, mm -hmm. I, I make sure I, I, I am thankful for what I encountered that day, thankful for everything. Also, if it's hurting or it's sadness, I'm thankful for that. Um, and that helps me a lot. So when I go to sleep, uh, like Seneca says, before we go to sleep, uh, we have all encountered fortune or uh, for, uh, the mistress Fortuna. And um, I find that's a beautiful thing to do when you, right before you go to sleep, what are you thankful for? And uh, what are the things you, you still have to learn on your path there? Because mm. We're all pro procoptons, right? We're all stoic learners. We're not the saints. Yes. We're not the Holy <laughs> Spirit. We're not God. <laughs> We're uh, human beings. Yeah. Uh, so I st I'm not a natural stoic. I'm an athlete. I want to win gold. Yeah. I want to beat everybody. I want to challenge myself. I want to go out there. Um, so stoicism for me is like a really a sort of framework. And I use these reflections every day when I wake up. And when I go to bed, also thinking of death, contemplating death, uh, memento mori. Um, what, what if I look back at the end of my life? Hopefully, <laughs> it will. I will be old. My my grandmother is 100 years. She still is alive. Um, I hope to reach that age. But if you look back at your life, did you make wise choices? Were you chasing the right things, not mm -hmm. the wrong things? Were you in connection with the people around you, the people you love? Uh, uh, so, so these reflections help me every day. Am I doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. um, for me to say at the end of, of this life or even at the end of this day, because you don't know if there's a next one. Mm -hmm. um, are these the choices I want to make? Am I on my own path? Uh, am I leading my own path? For me, stoicism is a sort of way to reflect on that uh, and that's what i write in my book too the stoic mindset it's i don't embrace stoicism or i don't teach stoicism through my book like this is stoicism like a, a, a religion yeah. or a dogma I'm far from it yeah i think everybody you can see it as an inspiration and a, a school of thinking yeah learning to think better yeah. to look at life in another way and that's what helps me a lot so it's up to you to put it into practice, but it's not like we don't have a teacher saying, oh, you can do that or you can do that. No, it's for me, it's a, a relief and a, a way of expanding my view and um, and doing it in a non-judgmental way. So yeah. that's what I tell myself every day too. What, what are the things you're judging others about? What's the judgment you can withhold? Yeah. What's the reflection you can do on this? I think for me, uh, kind of uh, to kind of clarify or to kind of put a point on that, the way that I talked about it, and because I've had uh, people ask me, it's like, so what is the difference between this and a religion? Yeah, and you you nailed it. It's it's the dogma. There's no dogma with, no. with stoicism. It's about these are tools, these are mindsets, yeah. these are principles, and because they're principles, they're flexible. Yeah. They're they allow you to adapt to any situation. Yeah. You filter it through the principle. You know, is am I using courage? Am yeah. I being wise? Am I being just? Yeah. Am I being uh, and probably you know, right? If you're not making a wise <laughs> choice, you, sometimes you do that and you know. Yeah, you no, know. No, this is not a wise choice, but I still do it anyway. Exactly. Okay, but then you cannot fool yourself, right? Exactly. And and the thing is, is it's for some people that's harder. Some people want yeah. re religion. They want a dogma because yeah. it's easier to follow. You know, yeah. you know, and that's pray. fine too. Yeah, and it's fine if yeah. that works for you. But yeah. I think that I think that that's what attracted Stoicism to, for me was that I grew up Mormon, and so I was yeah. in a very dogmatic religion. Yeah. And I tried living all of the principles exactly the way they said, and I was still unhappy. I was yeah. miserable yeah. for so much of my life. And so left the church, and then it wasn't until, like I said, about seven years ago when I finally found Stoicism, and it was suddenly like, why didn't I know these things <laughs> growing up? These things could have really changed my life. I learned what I can't control. I learned... Yeah how to change my perspective yeah. on so many things. And it's a freedom of thinking. It it's is. Lo, it's, it's way more freedom. It's funny yeah, that Stoicism started off and then Christianity came in between and now Stoicism is on the rise again probably. And it, I think it will be for a couple of thousand years. So it's what suits you and for me too. For me, getting rid of the dogmas. So I'm, I'm really also a little bit... There are also people, of course, who say, hey, this is not stoic or that's, that's not stoic. And I find that amusing because, <laughs> hey, this is philosophy. 
It's not like <laughs> yeah. a set of rules you have to abide to. It's a way of thinking uh, which you want to adopt because it enriches your life and, yeah. and it, it expands your thinking without yeah. judging. And that's, I think, the beauty of it. Yeah, I find that funny when somebody says, when I, I'll, I'll look on the Reddit uh, Stoicism forum yeah, sometimes yeah. and answer questions on there from time to time. And I do think it's funny when somebody says, well, that's not Stoic yeah. or whatever. And I'm just like, that's... Are you sure? I mean, you're yeah. being very judgmental. You say, According you say to that which doesn't... Stoic? <laughs> exactly. You could say, I don't think that follows Stoic principles very well and yeah. explain why. Yeah, yeah, that can. Um, but just to make a judgment and you be the arbiter of, well, that's not Stoic. You know, oh. you could say that that behavior doesn't seem to follow the principles. And I think that that's where, where for me, I like kind of having that, like I said, I like having that flexibility because it allows you, to, because life is full of nuance. It's not black oh, or white. It's not... It's not right or wrong all the time. It's things somewhere in the middle. It's like, for me, my favorite movies are the ones where you kind of like the villain. That there's yeah, yeah, yeah. there's empathy for the villain because nobody's all bad and nobody's all good. No. And I like it when people are darker and they're a little messier with things. Because yeah, yeah. that's the way life really is. And yeah. I think stoicism allows for that messiness in life. And I think that's oh, very yes, important. Oh, yes, it does. I think so, too. And I think that too many... And I think that that's why it's becoming more and more attractive to people because... Life is so complicated. Um, yeah. And I wanted to, I guess that kind of leads into one of my next questions mm -hmm. is um, uh, Stoicism in modern life. I mean, yeah. how do you think that Stoicism can help us with our fast paced technology during yeah. the world? Well, I think um, we, we get distracted a lot uh, by, by phones, by news, by social media posts. People really are uh, getting used to just putting their thoughts and their judgments out there and we have to react so it's a reaction yeah society we react on reactions <laughs> yeah. so we react but nobody takes a step back and reflects and think hey why am i doing this why is somebody hurting me or what do i feel you know if on twitter or x or whatever you call it yeah. these days <laughs> if somebody reacts and, and has a file opinion or uh, about me, or I, I am on television, and, and, and somebody, it hurts me. It really is, I think, why is what you could do, and that I think this is really stoic, like, why does this hurt me this much? Yes. Why is the opinion of one, one person of me valuable? It might be. It might be somebody I respect, or somebody gives me uh, feedback, in a, mm -hmm. but if I respect someone, he gives me feedback in a in a way I can do something with that. That that's that's what I find valuable. But that wouldn't hurt me actually, right? Yeah. So why does it hurt me? Yeah. Is it my ego? Is it something I want to push back on and like, well, you this and you that? <laughs> that's the that's the impulse you have, right? That's yes. what what the Stoics teach teach us is like, okay, the impulse is there. Yeah. Of course, if somebody yep. cuts me off in traffic, my first impulse, well. I'm, uh, yeah, you I'm wanna... gonna do something to you, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think the beauty of stoicism is to take a step back and think about, okay, somebody, do I give this person the power to make me feel like this? Uh, like Epictetus would say, you're complicit in yeah. the story. If you react, you can exactly. also detach from that story, yeah. live your own life, and let the impulse flow away and use your thought on why this matters. So for me, uh, what really helped me is when I, in 2006, I missed the Olympic Games of Turin uh, and I was lost. I, 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 I did really well in tests. I had a perfect score. I had a great condition. My technique was good, but I missed out on the Olympics again because I, I fell in the strangest places during a race. Mm -hmm. uh, in the corners, I would fall like out of nothing. I was instable. So I thought about this again, like not trying to work harder or uh, react, but take a step back and say, where is this coming from? Uh, so I had a mentor, I had a great conversation with a mentor of mine and he really showed me a beautiful thing. He said, okay, what do you, he asked me a question, how, where do you stand mm -hmm. you towards your father and mother? Because my father and mother were still fighting each other in the divorce situation. Mm -hmm. And I put myself in between them, I was the one you know, uh, trying to fix the situation. And I thought, also, if I fix the situation, I find rest. Mm -hmm. And if I find rest, I can be become a good athlete. So mm -hmm. I have to fix the situation. 
But I learned to see it the other way around. It's, this is not my situation. This is not my fight. This is a fight between people, two people I love, but it's not my fight. Yeah. I have to step out of this fight uh, and say that. I said, mom, I'm not your co-fighter in this fight. I'm, this is you, this is me. I have my own path. And I went to my father and that's where judgment comes in. I was really angry towards my father. So a mm. lot of anger, and that's what the Stoics teach us. And I think the beauty of Stoicism is you can't get rid of that anger. That yeah. anger has got nothing to do with my father. Epictetus would say, we have our, our uh, things that happen to us. Uh, me, uh, my parents divorcing. Uh, and then on the other hand, we have these emotions. But there's something in between. That's your judgment of the situation. Absolutely. So it was my judgment of my father that causes the anger. It's not my father. Yeah. I would, and it's, we all do this, right? We blame someone for yep. the feeling. We yep. blame uh, the person or we blame the situation. And that's totally not stoic. So Epictetus really, I thought that resonated with me. So I talked with someone, and, hey, I know this. This is from stoicism, it's from Epictetus, right? So I, I thought about this and I asked him what to do. He said, just call your father up, just do that. And I did that without judging him. Yeah. It's my judgment, not his. So I asked him questions and I, that's I think what we should learn to do more often. Eh? That's what the Stoics and we all learned from Socrates. Don't think you know this. Don't think you're the right person for this. Don't think your judgment is how the world works. It's your judgment. Yeah. So if you ask a good question and be really honest in your in you wanting to know the answer. So I, I called my father up and I said, I miss him and let's get into contact with each other again. So I, I withhold my judgment. Of course, I judge him somewhere for what happened, but I tried to not intervene. <laughs> let that judgment intervene between our situation. And uh, even up to this day, I, 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 now I can say I'm 43 years old, I, that whole judgment is gone, it's gone. Yeah. I, I love my father time. for who he is, and yeah. yes, he has his troubles and his dark sides, but hey, <laughs> look in the mirror. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I don't. Yeah, so, I so for me it was really, am I a better father when I'm 20, 30 years older, these reflections? Do I know what it feels like to have not any contact with your sons for six years? No, I don't. So instead of judging him, it's wiser to try to let him into my life again. Yeah. And my father was there when, when I won Olympic gold medal. So it was, that was great. And in these four years, between 2006 and 2010, I didn't feel any anger. So the anger faded. And what made that situation better for me in my life was my life became better because my choices became wiser because they were not fueled by anger. Yeah. I could be become a better athlete, more relaxed, like th that I'm sort sure. of paradox, yeah. right? The balance yep. that we talked about. So I was more relaxed. Uh, I could dive deeper with training. I could work harder uh, and I became a better person, but also a better athlete. And that's for me, <laughs> that was the, 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 the one thing I needed to really get the best out of myself and to become Olympic champion. Yeah, yeah, I can relate to that very well. I had uh, a lot of anger towards my father as well. Yeah. So um, my parents got divorced when I was twenty, when I was twenty years old. Yeah, yeah, same, and, same age. Yeah, yep. and uh, and when I found out why, and found out all the reasons for it, and I was, like I said, I grew up Mormon. I was on my mission in Austria when I found out. Oh yeah. And I was, I was very angry. I was, I came home. I t tried talking to my dad a little bit about it. He was very evasive about things. Um. And then unfortunately we never got to really reconcile because he died just a few years after that. So oh, yeah. it, just completely uh, out of the blue. So his pancreas just started eating the rest of his organs and he died within 10 days, he just Whoa. gone. Whoa. Um, but over the years as I've gotten older and wiser yeah. and I've had kids of my own and recognize how challenging that is, yeah. um, learn to really work to forgive him and to understand him because you know, with the fact he was dead, all that hate did, all that anger did was hurt me. Yeah. And so trying to understand him, because he wasn't all bad. There were plenty of things about him that were great, but when they weren't, it was really awful. And so it was like about an 80-20 split. Like 80% of the time he was good, 20% yeah. he was awful. Yeah. And so I, now I'm at that point in my life where I can look back on that and, and just appreciate the good things. Yeah. There. He was smart, he was funny, he was kind. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, that's a beautiful way of saying it. And I, that's also what I find fascinating is somebody to, to, 
to change that perspective, yep. you don't need the other person. Absolutely. Actually, the person cannot be there anymore. It's yeah. your perspective, which exactly. you can change. And that was the thing that I learned was that I had to change my perspective about my dad. Yeah. And I choose to, that perspective. It's not that I ignore the bad things he did because he was very abusive when we were growing up yeah. at certain points. But I can still appreciate the good things that he gave. But that's what Epictetus says, right? Yeah. I found it beautiful in his sayings. He said, too, <laughs> it's your parents. You don't get to choose your parents. Yes. That's what's <laughs> given to you. So you better learn and love what's given to you. Yeah. They can be challenging. They can be bad. They can do horrible things. But they're your parents. Yep. And I always push that thought away. People say, hey, it's, it's your father. I say, yeah, well, to hell with that. But it's true. It's like, it's exactly what Epictetus says and what the Stoics, these wise people tell us. It's like... You can be angry at your neighbor or your brother, or you can wish another father, but that's not the case. This is reality of life. And it's your uh, role as a son to be a good son, to watch your father or okay. to watch your mother uh, and to respect what they've did. You don't know. You don't know where they come from. They have yeah. their burdens. They have their yeah. share, uh, which, which they take on their shoulders. And you don't know what that's like. So you can judge them, but you don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and the only and the thing is, is like I said, when you hold on to that, yeah. you're the person that gets hurt. Like, you are hurting yourself. That old, it's that old Confucius saying, like yeah. holding on to anger is like holding on to a hot coal that you want to throw at somebody. Yeah. The longer you hold on to it, you're the one that gets yeah. burnt. And I was just like, I remember I read that when I was a teenager, and I was like, that's an interesting idea. And then as I got older and found yeah, stoicism, yeah. I'm like, there's the coal again. There's the coal. <laughs> <I> totally <laughs> yeah, get that idea. It's so powerful that you can just. You know, just so you can get rid of these negative emotions. That's, I think, the beauty in, in the way of thinking in Stoicism as philosophy. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to touch on something that I know is it's, it's probably one of the hardest topics in your mm -hmm. book. And that's about your mother's suicide. Yeah. How did that impact you personally? And what was it that maybe in Stoicism, maybe it was something else that mm -hmm. helped you get through that? Because I imagine that was an yeah. incredibly hard thing. Yeah, it was really hard. So my mother was severely depressed. Um, the hardest choice I ever had to make in my life in 2010, right before the Olympics, was to call my mother up and ask her not to come to Vancouver, just stay home. And uh, she was there when I first stood in the ice. She was there going with me to training, etc., etc. So I love my mother, uh, but, but for me, that was, I think we all, f that's the challenge we all face in life. We have our own path to take. Yeah. We have to find our own path. And for me, I was at the point in my life where I had to really choose, choose my own path and make hard decisions. So I called my mother up and said, Mom, I love you, but I cannot handle you being there emotionally, physically, so please don't come. And she couldn't handle that trip because she was not in a good way and not, not in a good position in life. Two, two years later, she committed suicide. And that's, that's sad. That's, that's terribly sad. But what for me clicked after that was the way I look at it, it's not, dying is not, for her of course, dying was a, a sort of a relief yeah. because she was in a lot of pain. So, and I cannot comprehend what it's like to, to endure that pain. I know people who are depressed. I know people who have thoughts of doing that. And I know, thank God, a lot of people who get through that and enjoy life. Again, she couldn't. Um, so, and she's stubborn. and. She has a powerful will. <laughs> so she really, yeah, for her it was a relief. So the, the, the pain is on us as sons or as, uh, and, and that's, there, there is no love without pain and, and, and that's what this life is like. So it's painful. So with negative emotions, I, I don't say there, I'm, I'm not against pain. If, if it's natural pain, if it's there, it's, it's real, it's okay. It hurts, but hey, this is life. I don't have to push that back. It's there. So I let that pain come through. And for me, the real pain was not in that moment she, she died or committed suicide. It was more in the, in the 10 years leading up to that point. Mm. She didn't have a life. Yeah. She was depressed and she couldn't handle it. You know me with my stoic mindset. I'm like, just think this different. She couldn't. She yeah. just couldn't. And we tried. So for me, it was letting go of that and letting go of... Uh, controlling her life or controlling her decisions. So finding peace in the decisions she actually made and not only finding peace in that, but also uh, not wanting to change that. That's, of course, I want her to be there, but for me, 
I want that's my yeah. as a son. I want yeah. my mother to be there. My oldest daughter was just born, so like you have your first grandchild and you don't want to be here anymore. And I thought about it, and probably it's for her. And she know the she know how this feels to have a grandchild, and and then there's such a disconnect with the way she was feeling for herself. So you, I cannot comprehend that. Uh, so for me, what what I find beautiful in stoicism is okay. I have my life, uh, and I want to the way I can commemorate or honor my mother is to live to the full extent of my life. That's what I can do with yeah. the people around me I love, with my brothers, with my ki- children. And that's what I, that's my mission. I can do that and I can show another way. Uh, and I, I don't get my mother back for that, but uh, my mother lives through me. <laughs> Her love is still there. Yeah. Uh, and that helped me a lot. So death is not something I fear or uh, ab- abolish or abandon from my life. It's there with my mother and it's going to be there for me. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but that the only thing I want is to live uh, and go out there in life, not hold back, not hold back on love, not hold back on being pushed back by negative emotions. So let go of these negative emotions, clear space for joy, for zest, for freedom, for living. Um, uh, and if death, death comes, <laughs> then I can look back if I have the chance. Maybe it's swift, maybe not. Uh, and say to myself, wow, this, is, uh, this has been a work of art. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's how I look at it. Yeah, yeah. I hope, I'm, hope I can get to that point as well. And right now, I'm, like I was telling you earlier, I'm kind of in a state of flux of yeah. just finding my, my own path right now. And I can appreciate what I've, what I've done in my life and accomplished, but I feel like I could do so much more. And sometimes I... I struggle with that because I don't feel like I've done anything great in my yeah. life yet. Yeah. I don't have any, like, I don't have a gold medal yeah, that yeah. I can look back on. Yeah, yeah. But I can at least look at, you know, I've got two great kids who turned out to be great people. Yeah. And I, I, I enjoy being around my kids. They're happy. Yeah. They have their struggles, but they're just, they're good people. And they grew up, you know, even though my, my ex-wife and I divorced when they were pretty young, um, they grew up with two fairly supportive and healthy parents yeah and that's been uh that's something that i didn't really get because you know my dad like i said was very violent he was very very tortured soul and so yeah so you broke the cycle definitely broke the cycle yeah yeah that's great man yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. my sister one time like she her biggest insult is you're just like dad and there was one time (laughs) where she saw me and my kids and she's like you're not like dad you're a good father oh i was like wow thanks yeah so i would like we i think a lot of People ask me this question if I, if I give motivational talks here in Holland and, and, and abroad too. Um, a lot of questions. And I talk about this. I talk about the death of my mother. I talk my, about my parents. I, I share deeply personal stories. Also because I don't want to be a, a taboo or anything around that. This is mm-hmm. what happens in life. So for me, the question I get a lot is if, it, if it's hurting me or I, I feel guilt. And I could let go of that guilt too. So... And it's also, again, Epictetus, you can blame other people, you can blame the situation, or you can blame yourself. You cannot, you can also do, not do that, right? Don't blame other people, don't blame the situation, and don't blame yourself. Yes. I did everything I could. I love my mother, but this is her choice. She yeah. wanted this. Uh, so we better abide to her wish, because it's her wish. It's not my, I, my wish is that she would be here. Also yeah. in pain, but don't let her go. Yeah. So I don't feel guilt in that way and like for you you know it's not we put a lot of pressure on ourselves i think in modern society to to be accomplished or Mm -hmm. be uh, a good person so but of course we also feel guilt or we don't feel enough and we have to i think get rid of that idea of not being enough or feeling guilty of course you can make you're, you make your own decisions and you're responsible for these decisions. Absolutely. And that can be shitty decisions. Yes. <laughs> and you bear responsibility for that. It's not yes. to, to wane off the responsibility, but uh, if you do that and you do it with a, uh, uh, intent, well, well in, uh, intended, yeah, you should think of it every day like it's a stoic reflection maybe. Um, 
So where, where I, I don't have to feel guilty because I did what I could. Did yeah. I do this? Did I make the right decision? Yes, then I don't have to feel guilty. Do I feel accomplished? Maybe not, but me being the best person there is, that's an accomplishment. Yeah. If we could all do that, yeah. raise beautiful children, uh, that's the accomplishment. That's where, it, and that's great, that's enough. We don't have to add anything to that, we yeah. want to. We want to build legacy. We want yeah, to absolutely. be known at, till, at the end of their careers, <laughs> like Marcus Aurelius said, like Alexander and his uh, and stable boy. Yeah, and his stable boy. You know, they're all, they're both buried. Yep. You can't see you can't tell any distinction which, yeah. between their bones. <laughs> exactly. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's you. It's your own path, and you have to take that path. Yep. Nobody else can do that for you. And that's, I think. The challenge in life that's 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 hard but it, that's where i think the purpose lies and the motivation lies and the beauty lies it's the yeah. pain and the beauty it lies there and that's the road you follow it's no i'm not good enough it's no guilt that's not there you know in the rep the republic of sino uh, the original founder of stoicism mm -hmm. uh, these were all ideas that were not there jealousy hate accomplishments you know, if we can get rid of these human ideas, which function, right? They make us win gold medals because exactly. we're like, I have to beat that other guy. So exactly. it's not, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's not good or bad in, a, in an ethical sense. It's not yeah. a good just, life. Yeah, it just, it's, it is. It, it is, is what it is. Yeah, and you it can, can be, be beautiful. It can, yeah. it, it can I've, I, I derive a lot of pleasure from it and I love that, but uh, that's another concept of, being happy or feeling fulfilled yeah yeah and i think that that we do sometimes feel that drive like we have to accomplish something in our life and the thing is we don't we don't have to accomplish anything you don't what no. we have to do is be a good person but yeah. oftentimes when we and we have to sorry but we, it's, this is funny because you say hey, we have to be a good person or you don't have to you know, these are all also normative thoughts. If, if we look at Socrates and his questioning and style of questioning, uh, whoa, there, there's the camera. Uh, what? Wanna check it out? Uh, yeah, uh, let me figure out what's going on here. Old oh, phone is not centered. Yes, it was, come on. Is it back on track? Yeah, that was really weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I may have say. to return that thing. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, it's, that's like, if you're not good enough or you have to be a good person, these are normative thoughts. You know, when you look back at Socrates, what he learns us is if you challenge yourself, challenge yourself or others with questions, let's in Socratic questioning. I did courses on that because I find it a beautiful instrument. Epictetus yeah. uses it in his colleges. Absolutely. So you can ask, so okay, you have to be a good person. Why? Why is that? That's a question, why, why do we have to be yeah. a good person? Why do you have to be? And then what yeah. also, what defines a good person? What is a good person? Yeah. Exactly. And why do you have to be, a, or do you want to be a good person? Why do you want to be a good person? Do you, yeah. you can also say, well, I don't feel great about myself, but I have to be a good person so I can feel great about myself. Exactly. I, it's something like that. You know, it's, yeah. it's all, we, we, we make up stories in our mind, of course. Yep. So the challenge is, I think, to really challenge these thoughts. So why is this? And that's what I find beautiful in Stoicism, when it comes down to the four uh, the, the values, you know, the temperance, uh, justice, courage, wisdom, practical wisdom. Um, if you think through it and you ask yourself these questions, you get down to the core of this. That's yeah. what you cannot debate, actually, because that's what, if you think about it, is what a great person or a good person, it's, that's probably what it looks like. Exactly. And for me, what, was, what I found fascinating was I've been studying some Socrates lately because that was something that I found the Stoics and was like, oh, wait a second. Basically, the Stoics took Socrates' stuff and yeah. this is the conclusions they came to it's using true, yeah. the Socratic yeah. method. Yeah. So basically, he gave them the tools and they're like, hey, yeah. well, we're going to refine it a little bit more. I don't know what's <laughs> going on with my camera here. All right, back on it. Um, yeah. <laughs> now that we don't have a the floppy way, yeah. phone anymore. <laughs> but... Um, Socratic, Socratic method. Yeah, so on the Socratic method, yeah. Uh, what I really liked about that was, like I said, they, they used it and then they came to these conclusions. So yeah. it was like, so they distilled down a lot of hard questions for us and answered some of those, but we can still use that same methodology to help answer any other questions for us. And so I've, that's one of, the, for me, that's been great 
coming from the Stoics and then slowly working back into Socrates yeah. and trying to understand those things. And I want to get better about using that and think through that more. I, I think I use some of it naturally, but not in a more, in that kind of formal way. Yeah. So that's something I've been reading uh, as a book by Ward Farnsworth. He's a, a professor at the University of Texas, and he's written a couple of books on Stoicism and yeah. other philosophy. And he has one that's about the Socratic method. It's like a practical handbook. And I remember I was like, so I, I read part of that and then I, Got rid of it because I have to sell my house and get rid of all of these yeah, things, yeah. and so I need to go buy the the ebook so I can finish reading that. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but it was so good, and and he does such a great job of explaining it, you know, why the how and everything, yeah. but in a way that's very approachable. It's not very dry like a professor. It's actually, you know, like he's a good writer, and so yeah, that's and, a great method. It's yeah. really uh, you can learn it and practice it, and it's hard to do. Because yeah. you have to. Put it's, your own judgment out of the situation. Exactly. And that's hard. You go, well, well, I know what good is. Yeah, well, yeah. We'll do yeah of you. course, this is good. Yeah, exactly. Well, why is that? <laughs> why is it good? And, and, and I think that's weird for Stoicism. You, if you think about it, and that's, I think, the, the, the nature part, where the nature part comes in, the ethics, the logic, and the physics, it's like this is how nature works. This is works. This is how life works. This is how, how the world around us works. And if you call it God or will or et cetera, et cetera, it doesn't really matter. This is, yeah, this is the way we see nature work. So if you use your reasoning, uh, and you use the, the 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 knowledge you know about nature and the 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 knowledge that we are social animals, so we connect with other people, learn from other people, can question other people. I think you derive these ideas from stoicism. If you if you think of it well, that's you you come down to this. That's for me actually where I ended up with. In Stoicism, it's like, okay, if you follow all these other philosophical ideas, you know a little about how the world works, how we work as people, then this is what I find most fitting. Yeah, it, it seems to be the most close to, you could say, almost a universal truth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or a set of universal truths. Because, yeah. one, because they're principles, so they, they can be applied, and there's a bit of flexibility, but also it just seems like the natural end to those questions. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and that's that's what I like about stoicism is that it's not an absolute you have to do these things. It's oh. a it's here's the end result and if you apply this in almost every situation, you will yeah. find this works and this is true. True. Yeah. And and I haven't found a situation where it hasn't worked. And so for me, that's been yeah, that's why it's been so life-changing for me because it helped me to see so many errors in my own thinking about things and yep. my own reactivity and, and I used to be I used to be much more hot headed and now I'm much more calm about things like like the other day somebody sent me a really nasty note on uh, Instagram because they didn't like a 60 second video that I put up and they were like I can't get my time back and blah, 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 and they <laughs> swearing at me and I was like wow and at first I was like Ur. you know I, like you said I felt that anger and I was just like well that's his problem you no know? Or like the Stoics would say uh, if it's his Reasoning. So it's funny if <laughs> if somebody takes time to react on a message that took 60, 60 seconds. seconds of his time, <laughs> and he takes another 60 seconds to react. That's that's okay. You've thought about this before you reacted <laughs> like this. That's kind of that's what that's what you can define as stupid. Exactly. So, and yeah. so I, I I just was like, but I felt that little zing yeah, of, of like, course. Mm. I know what you mean? Yeah. And I had to just be like, okay, well. It, it, and oftentimes when I do that, I take it even one further step back. And I'm like, wow, if somebody feels that way or feels that upset about something so small like that. Yeah. Imagine where they are in life. Exactly. Yeah. It, almost, it, it made me feel uh, uh, sorry. Sa sorry for yeah. them. And I have yeah. a little bit of empathy towards them. I'm just like, yeah, wow, yeah. That's, that's tough. If you're, if you're that upset because I had a 60-second video that you thought was me just rambling because I talk, I was in Florida at the time because I'm talking about the weather in Florida. Yeah. And then I, I, yeah. I proceeded to finish my lesson. It was like, you know, 15 seconds of, hey, here's the weather like this. It's kind of cool, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And then, mm -hmm. the, you know, the rest of the 60 second video was talking, you know, I think I was like, hey, I'm going to be doing a Q&A session. I want you to add, you know, go ahead and post some questions here and I'll try and put them in there. Yeah. And I was like, wow, if he's that, if he's that upset over that. Yeah. 
Wow, I feel I feel kind of sorry for him. Man. Yeah, I think I that's he... an empathetic um, empathetic way of, of, yeah. of looking at a situation. Whereas before, I would have been like, "You're yes. such a jerk." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're a jerk. No, you're a jerk. No, you're a jerk. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so I decided that for me, it has been helpful because it's allowed me to get more space in between that. Yeah. And rather than reacting, I can respond better. Yeah. And it's it's definitely helped my life a lot. And I, I like not being reactive like that because I used to be much more reactive because that's how my dad was. That's how I grew up. Yeah. Things, if something upset you, it's just like. Poof. Oh yeah, that's how you're probably wired and what you saw around you. So that's yeah. really hard to change. But it yeah. gives a lot of freedom to, to feel it that, does. right? That's, yeah. There's the freedom or else you become a slave of your upbringing or your father or, your, or, your, or somebody else who hurts you. Yeah. Uh, and you can, you can be a leader for yourself instead of, being a slave to the situation. Yeah, and it's been really, really helpful. And I'm not perfect at it. I mean, there's still times where I still get mm, about yeah. things and I just have to... No, but I don't think uh, Marcus Aurelius was or all these Stoics were. Yeah, <laughs> and they understood that. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's what's so great about Stoicism. It's not about perfection. It's not about that you don't get angry. It's about no. how you choose to deal with that anger. Yeah. You know, do you let it just consume you? Do you let it be reactive? Do you give that pause and just let it feel and just... Yeah. Take a breath and let it out, and then choose your response. And there are many ways to do that. And you just have to figure out which one's going to be most effective for you. Yeah, it's a misconception in Stoicism, right? That Stoic means that there's no anger or there's no in the ideal sage situation, of course. But, yeah. of course, there is in normal life. I, I, when I give presentations, that's the first thing. I, when I talk about my father and I tell my story of being angry, I, I ask the audience, who's angry sometimes? And all the hands go up, you know? I say, well... Good. Welcome in life. Yeah. This is what you feel. Yeah. Huh? It's, it's, not a, it's a misconception that stoicism or being stoic means that you don't feel that anger. No, it can be there. Yeah. But we're grown-ups. We have the ability to reason. So we can make a conscious choice to not give in to that anger, but yeah. to, give, to take distance from it and think about it and react in a different way and let it go. Yeah. That's what we as yeah. wiser grown-up people Absolutely. could do. That's Absolutely. our capability. That's up to us. Yeah. And I'd say, and that's one of the things on my podcast I talk a lot about people. I'm like, it's okay to feel all your feelings. Yeah. If you feel sad, okay. There, oh, are, totally there are times okay. where you want to feel sad. Yes. I mean, when somebody dies or... If you love someone, you, you have something. to let go. That's, that's sad. Yeah. yeah. And you want to grieve. You don't yeah. want to not feel those things. No. You want to grieve and you, you want to feel the, the full you know, range of emotions in life. That's yeah. what makes life great is that you have all of these. And... And I see that on the Reddit sometimes, you know, people will be like, ah, oh, I'm feeling so sad about this thing and I don't want to, you know, how do I get rid of this emotion? And it's yeah. like, you just got to go through it. Yeah. Just feel it. The more you resist feeling sad, the, the more it's going to come back and get to you. Yeah. And if you're able to just kind of flow with it, you know, you follow nature. Your yeah. nature is, nature is that we are emotional beings. So yeah. flow with those emotions. Yeah. But, but what we're talking about is yeah. not letting them do, make you... Not letting them no. drive you to do stupid things. <laughs> no, or not blaming anyone. Oh, you left me and now I feel hurt or sad. You, it's your fault. No, yeah. it's, you're sad because somebody. you have to let somebody go or you don't want to let somebody go or yeah. else you wouldn't have felt sad. So it's up to you and not to change it, but to accept it Yeah, and feel it. Yeah, yeah of course. And accepting that. Yeah, absolutely. Accepting your emotions is an incredibly powerful tool because yeah. you're saying, it's one, it's acknowledging reality. I feel this way. Exactly. That's reality. Yeah, that's the beauty where logic comes in. And I write it in, in, a, in chapter five of my book, The Stoic Mindset. It's about Amar Fati, hey, uh, accept your faith and love it. Uh, I think that's a really hard thing, especially if life throws you around or you, you get hurt or you have a terrible disease you have to encounter. Um, and for, I think it can be really hard. I have an example of Bibian Mentel. She was an Olympic, Paralympic uh, snowboarder. And she had a beautiful life. She was a beautiful person. I interviewed her for my podcast. She's here in Holland. She's like uh, the pinnacle of, of the radiation of positive emotions, of beauty. But still, she was diagnosed with cancer, which she died from, from uh, two years ago, sadly. Mm. And she knew this. She knew, she knew she was going to die, but she still did all these things in life which, with a positive attitude. She never complained. She was there. She was cared for other people. She was a beautiful person. So... That's also what's possible in that situation. So I think the funny thing is that that's what I find the beauty in Stoicism is it's 
in that sense rational because if you have the choice you, you she had like she there was a doctor and the doctor told her you cannot snowboard anymore and you're are going to die you have cancer so the logical thing to lead a good life and a fulfilling life is to and, and this is terribly hard and i i i'm healthy so it's for me it's easy to say but if i look at her um the logical thing to do is the only thing you can do is not only accept that but also love it the reality of life this is my reality right now and you can conf you can uh, push it away you can get angry of it but that hurts you so the life you have left is not going to be good it hurts you uh, so logically if you want to lead a good life the only option you have is to accept it and if if, if you want to lead a really good life love it yeah and that's that's so hard but it's logically it's the only option you have yep there was a, a great article that i i just read the other day um and you'll love the title of it it's called welcome to holland oh yeah and this woman wrote it and it was about how kind of the story goes along it's like so imagine you're planning a trip you were, you're going to italy yeah you you were excited you, you've wanted to go to italy your whole life you plan this trip you've got it all down and you you make all the arrangements you get off the plane and the first thing that happens is you, the stewardess, you know, welcomes you and goes, "Hello, welcome to Holland." You're like, wait a second, I'm yeah. supposed to go to Italy. Yeah, I, well, what's going on here? Why, why is the sun not shining? Exactly. Where's my pasta? Where's exactly. my espresso? <laughs> so, and then you walk in and you're just like, "But all these things I won't see." And and the woman was talking about it in regards to sometimes the life that we want, flying to Italy is not the life that we get. We end up in Holland. But if all we do is pine away for Italy and why we didn't get to Italy and life's unfair because yeah. we didn't get to go to Italy, then we miss all the beautiful things about Holland. Yeah. We miss the windmills, we miss the canals, we miss yeah. we miss the weather. It's actually, I mean, I don't mind this weather. It's better. <laughs> I lived in Minnesota for 5 years, so this weather's yeah, fine. Well, I I my holidays I go to Italy because I love <laughs> I love Italy. I want to go there too, but I we're here at the waterfront and yeah. it freezes over here. It's beautiful. Absolutely. And that's the thing. It's just like all of the things here. And yes, we don't have, you know, Michelangelo's, but you have Rembrandt's here. You have Van Gogh's. Yeah, we have Amsterdam is beautiful. Yeah, that's yeah. what Epictetus is to quote, do not seek to have events happen to you as you wish, but wish them to happen as they do happen and all will be well for you. You exactly. know, this this exactly what I mean. This is Yeah. Marx yeah. really said not this is a misfortune, but to bear this worthwhile is a good fortune. It's yeah, absolutely. And so I, I it was just funny that I stumbled on this article just a couple of days ago and I was just like, that's that's so great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like and given that yeah. I'm here. So like, that's why, why you ended up here in Holland. Exactly. <laughs> you wanted I to didn't know where I was going. So I just, <laughs> welcome to Holland. Um, yeah, there was, it was, it was, but I really like that kind of metaphor about that. And I thought it was appropriate for yeah. where we are. So uh, just, I guess we'll finish up with a few more questions. Um, uh, here's a good one. Uh, advice for aspiring Stoics. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's interested in Stoicism, what advice would you give? Are there specific books, practices, yeah. or thought exercises that you'd recommend? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, this is the question I got a lot, uh, especially during COVID and during presentations. So the, the Stoic mindset, I really wrote it because it's an introduction into how you can think more Stoic and how I dealt with that. And there are 10 lessons in the book which you can follow. So it's really an intro to Stoicism if you want to dive deeper, of course. Mm -hmm. I always say to people, uh, yeah, get to the original text of Seneca, of Marcus Aurelius. Of, and Seneca is easy to, to read. It's yeah. a good intro. Marcus Aurelius is not something, yeah, the meditations you, you, you probably will read from A to Z within an evening. It's more you read it through it and you contemplate it. You, mm -hmm. uh, and, and Epictetus, it's a little harder to... to to follow and grasp, especially the whole uh, bundle. So, but I, it's definitely worthwhile. I think if mm -hmm. you look at the Stoics and think of where they come from and what situation they were in life, uh, and it's unfortunate that we don't have all the texts of the early Stoics. Yeah. Uh, and and if you think of the Greek uh, Empire and the, the the Roman Empire and the Greek city state Athens, what happened there? It's it's a beautiful way where. These, these people went through challenges, so, so read them and think about that. What, what does that mean if, you, you know, if you're the emperor of Rome and you encounter not only the loss of children, the betrayal of your best general, but also a pandemic that ravages your empire? How do you deal with that? 
yeah. how do you keep sane how yeah. do you keep doing the right things uh, so if you want the leadership lessons start with Marcus Aurelius if you want to have a friend who gives you some friendly and more worldly advice go to Seneca if you want to have a teacher who sometimes is stern and tells you what to do look for Epictetus um, yeah. so that's where I would start off with and with practices yeah for me the making the, 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 the distinction between what is up to you and what is not up to you is really powerful yeah. uh, Stephen Covey borrowed it of course from Epictetus and it's beautiful I think because if there's a high pressure situations that that's what I always do if I have a hard time I tell myself okay if I have to let someone go or it's a situation uh, I am having trouble with handling or a companion in my company which which I have a, a, a situation with or a confrontation with it's okay what's up to me what's not up to me um, it's my internal state I can do the things for myself um, in a good manner I, I focus on the right things to do uh, and I work hard for that but the reaction of the other person is not up to me the goal we want to reach as a company is not up to me especially in COVID you can make a perfect business planning you can think of products coming your way and then COVID happens and everything goes down the drain every yep. plan you had so it's not only the output, it's the input you put in. You have to devise a new plan. You have to sit together, et cetera, et cetera. So try to do that. And for me, like I said, at the end of your day, like Seneca did, try to think of, I think thinking of death, it sounds a little scary or, or not natural for people to do. But I, I think that's a liberating thought. If you think about death, it's for me, it's liberating in life. Uh, I write in, in my book, one of the principles I write about is death makes life more epic. Yeah. Thinking about death, about the end, makes life more epic because it makes you think about the choices you make. Uh, are these good choices? Do you stand by them? Do you live a life where you live a life according to your values? Uh, do you live the, 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 the hardest thing people ask themselves when they die, uh, if they have regrets, the regrets always revolve around that they didn't lead their own life they let a life what other people wished for them or yeah. put upon them yeah so that's powerful stuff you should think about that every day not at the end of your life but right now yeah i think most people regret the things they didn't do yeah exactly so live a life with yeah. no regrets and of course like again you, you will have you some can, you have some. Okay. You, you will do stupid yeah. stuff <laughs> you're a human being yeah and but, you may regret the dumb things you did yeah. but i find that the things that i regret the most are the things that i didn't do yeah. or the chances that i didn't take yeah. you know I, you know yes there's some things that i i did and i wish that i hadn't done them because yeah. they were tough but i learned from them and so i don't necessarily regret them i re I may not think fondly on them, oh. but I don't necessarily truly regret them. No, but if you see a herd of people doing something and it becomes right or it becomes, that's why these questions are so powerful. What is good? You know, is it something we do in a society? Is it, is it the norm? Is this in a society which we follow? Uh, does this, is this your way you really want to live? Or yeah. is this your own path? Or do you follow a, a safe path, yep. which everybody will not judge you? Yep. Or everybody uh, won't be mad at you or etc etc yeah so there are a lot of powerful things working against us yeah or I mean, to reach our for full potential and to break through these barriers yeah. to break through the mold and to open up and uh, and be free with regards to other people with it's not like well i'll do whatever i want and woohoo freedom yeah that's not what real freedom is yeah um so what is it well maybe you stoicism has Pretty good answers on that. Yeah, I mean uh, it's, that's kind of why I'm here. Is it, yeah. it was scary. Oh, there we go again. <laughs> <laughs> ah, come on, phone. Do it. I don't know why it keeps just bailing like that. Luckily, the phone oh, is yeah. still going. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, so. <laughs> well, you can even see it's going wrong. So. But yeah, I mean, for me, yeah, that's kind of why I'm here. It was that it, it was actually kind of scary. And there were times, uh, I mean, there's even, you know, time leading up to here where I just kind of panic and be like, what am I doing? Am I, this is crazy. I'm just coming you over to You sold your house, you come over to Amsterdam, maybe live here, etc. Yeah, 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 and I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just <laughs> making it up as I go along and trying to find new opportunities and try to, um, 
see what I'm supposed to do in this life. And so right now it's very much exploring and it's it's scary at times. I'm just like, what am I doing here? I don't know yeah, what I'm doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm meeting people. I, you know, I met some people at a meetup last night that were, who were really cool. Um, just getting out there and, and trying to make things happen. I mean, I never would have gotten to do this if I hadn't. No. And this has been exactly. great. So yeah, I've yeah. been really enjoying this. So um, yeah, you have to sit with the discomfort. You have yeah. to sit with the chaos. You have to do not change it, but sit with it. And I think that's, uh, I think, yeah, there, there, there's beauty on the other side. If you want to go there, then yeah. sometimes and there are things happen you never yeah. would have imagined. And since I've been here, there have been some days where I'm just like, ah, oh, what am I doing here? I should just go home. It's much more comfortable there. You know, I know all yeah. these, I know, fr I know people, I know how yeah, life yeah, yeah. lives, yeah. you know, trying to navigate things here because I don't quite speak Dutch yet. I'm still yeah. working on learning that. That's um, hard, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I speak German fluently, yeah. so I understand, oh, yeah, that's, I, that I understand a, a lot of it, it and it's difference. actually made a big difference. Yeah. Um, I can understand, I can sit in most conversations and understand most of what's going on. Um, yeah, but, but it's funny, you know, what, because I have, I'm, I'm going to the World Championships in Canada and Calgary for speed skating, coming through you on television. Uh -huh. And I love Canada. I love going to the Rockies. Uh -huh. And I thought about, oh, I have to maybe, I want to go there a couple of days earlier and see it. And I'm, oh, no, I can't do that because I'm, I'm gone from home a long time. And I said, I was really, I said, well, if I think about this two days, I already, already could have made the choice to go two days earlier. <laughs> I don't have to think about it. Just do it and see what I do because... I want to do that, so why not? Yeah, mm -hmm. there are ten reasons why you couldn't or shouldn't, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. And there's one reason, like, yeah, let's. I want to do it. Let's just do it and see what happens. Yeah, and that's the thing is you. That's like so a, small. This yeah. is a small example. Yeah, and I mean, I, I know that if I didn't come, that I would regret it. Yeah. And I had a, a good friend of mine. She kept saying that. She's just like, if you don't go, you will regret it. Yeah. So just. You're living, you're living a dream that you've wanted to do for quite some time and yeah. that so many people would love to do. And you have this opportunity. Yeah. You are, in, you are in a place where this works for you. So you better go do that. And I'm like, ah, thank you. Oh, <laughs> just, that's great, man. Just yeah. re, kind of resetting my mind. Yeah, that's kind that. of funny because I thought, hey, we have a digital conversation maybe through a podcast, but you're actually here. So I was like, ah, okay, yeah. and now I know the story. Yeah, no, it's been great. Um, all right, I think I uh, kind of exhausted most of my questions. Is there anything right. else that you want to add to it? Do you want to maybe kind of put a plug in for where people can find you and yeah. find out more about what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, you can also check out my website, www.marktuyte, that's T-U-I-T-E-R-T dot -E N-L uh, in English. I have an English translation of my website, of course. Okay. Oh, <laughs> this is the last time. So we'll see, we can do that bit <laughs> over again. again. Yeah. So yeah, so go ahead and tell people where they can find you uh, and anything else you'd like them or you want sure. any socials, that kind of thing. So go ahead. Yeah, you can always uh, find me through Instagram, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Mark Tuyert, and my surname is T-U-I-T-E-R-T. -E and I will put that in the show notes yeah. for the uh, episode. So if you want to go find him, you can find him. Look at it in there. And Check out my website, website um, so you can find me here with the contact info. I do speaking engagements and my book, The Stoic Mindset, is out in April in the US, Canada, UK. So I'm really excited to, uh, to, to tell my story. And, uh, I hope, yeah, but with maybe even if it's one person uh, I can relate to or have an impact on in life um, and get into contact with Stoicism in that way, uh, that will be worthwhile for me. So. Uh, I would love to come over to the US, to the UK, to Canada to uh, to deliver my story. And it, uh, thank you for being here in yeah. the Netherlands. Yeah, and thank you for inviting me to your home. I really appreciate it. This yeah, is, no problem. This has been really great. So, all right. Thank you. All right. That concludes our interview. Um, like I said, I'll have a bunch of stuff in the notes uh, for the podcast. And uh, thanks again for listening. <laughs>